తప్పకుండా సార్ మీరు ఏదైనా చాట్ పెట్టినా నేను అది చూడకపోవచ్చు జస్ట్ గివ్ మీ రింగ్ డెఫినెట్లీ సార్ వీ మేక్ ఏ కాల్ సమ్టైమ్స్ నెట్ మిస్ అయింది అనుకోండి లేకపోతే ఏదో ఆడియో సరిగ్గా రాకపోవచ్చు దీంట్లో మీ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ కూడా జాయిన్ అయి ఉంటారా వాళ్ళు లేదా దే విల్ హ్యావ్ గో ఫర్ ది క్లాస్ వర్క్ వెళ్తారా వాళ్ళు దీంట్లో జాయిన్ అవుతారు మీ మీ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ అంటే మా డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ వరకు జాయిన్ అవుతారు సార్ కొంతమంది కొంతమంది ఆర్గనైజర్స్ గా ఉన్నారు స్టూడెంట్స్ ఉంటారు సార్ స్టూడెంట్స్ మీ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ ఉంటారా ఉంటారు సార్ సరే సార్ ఓకే సార్ సార్ ద టైమ్ ఈజ్ త్రీ ఓ క్లాక్ ప్లీజ్ స్టార్ట్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ సార్ ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ గుడ్ ఈవెనింగ్ టు ఆల్ పార్టిసిపెంట్స్ on the occasion of 136th birth anniversary celebrations of sri srinivas ramanujan our department is conducting a one week online international workshop on enhancing computational skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering from 18th to 23rd december 2023 and the first day that is 18th december 2023 dr l jagannathan sir professor school of computer science and engineering velur institute of technology chennai delivered a talk on support vector machine a classifier on the second day that is 19th december 2023 dr p nagarani garu senior lecturer department of mathematics the university of the west indies mono campus jamaica west indies delivered a talk on mathematical models in engineering yesterday that is 20th december 2023 dr yn reddy garu professor emeritus department of mathematics nit warangal delivered a talk on mathematics for robust computing more than 850 participants attended yesterday's session thank you one and all for your valuable participation in yesterday's session now i request our beloved hod sir dr k vilan acharl garu to address the gathering for today's session uh, good sir, evening boss yes. respected eminent resource person dr m a sinwas garu my esteemed faculty members and my dear students on behalf of the department of mathematics i humbly welcome all of you to this fourth day of international online workshop as the department of head of the department of mathematics and the convener of this international workshop i am deeply honored to have this opportunity to speak a few words in today's session of international workshop which is being conducting in view of 136th birth anniversary celebrations of sri sinuvas ramanujan who is applauded as one of the greatest mathematicians in the world 
this workshop is being planned for our students so that the students can improve their computational abilities in their engineering fields the primary objective of conducting <coughs> this international workshop is to focus on enhancing the computational skills in students community in various fields of engineering btech students can build strong computational skills necessary for future success in their chosen disciplines by integrating academic knowledge with the practical applications by dealing with real world challenges in this connection all btech students are advised to improve their computing skills our esteemed resource persons can provide insights in which computational skills are utilized in real life situations encouraging and motivating our students to enhance their inherent abilities in computing so with your worthwhile participation and collaborative cooperation this program will be fruitful one undoubtedly today we have a wonderful resource person with us the resource person for today's section is dr m a s sinwas garu professor emeritus department of mathematics jntu university of college of engineering science and technology hyderabad dr m a s sinwas sir is not only an inspiring teacher but also a source of motivation guidance and unconditional support to the students community all through his career dr m a s sinwas garu inspired thousands of students and also faculty members and one fame as a best teacher since all of these i can say that he is the best role model to all of us on behalf of department of mathematics i express my sincere thanks to dr m a sinwas sir for graciously accepting our request to deliver his valuable lecture in our international workshop thank you thank you very much sir finally i strongly believe that all participants can definitely utilize this opportunity to improve their computing skills of mathematics all the best thank you one and all thank you very much sir for your valuable message today is the fourth day in our one week online international workshop today's speaker is dr m a srinivas sir professor emeritus department of mathematics jnd university college of engineering science and technology hyderabad now i request one of our staff organizers mrs k nagmani to present profound profile of dr m a s rinivas gar good evening all welcome to a a one week online international workshop on enhancing computational skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering it's my privilege to introduce to today resource person dr m a s srinivas garu dr m a s srinivas sir is a professor emeritus jn2 college of engineering science and technology hyderabad he did phd with the thesis entitled contributions to certain non linear bio mathematical models He was a post-doctorate fellow at International Center for Theoretical Physics. He supervised and completed eight PhDs, and currently three students are working for their PhD under his guidance. He published fifty research articles in various reputed national and international journals. His area of research are mathematical modeling of biological systems, boundary value problems, and fluid dynamics. He has completed four research projects. funded by ugc and teqip he published four test books in mathematics and statistics and two more books are in pipeline he adapted modern modern teaching methods for visualizing theoretical concepts and created animation on topics like fourier series <coughs> applications of integration eigen values and eigen vectors and basic concepts of calculus which enhance the teaching learning process he delivered a lecture on multiple integral which was webcasted to affiliated colleges of jntu hyderabad and also delivered another lecture on partial differential which was telecasted by doordarshan adigiri channel and both of these are available in youtube he is a life member of various professional societies and a member of several academic committees He organized several conferences, workshops, and faculty development programs. He received a national merit scholarship during 1983-85. He rendered his services academic senate member of Andhra University. He was nominated as a panel member for AP Mass Forum formed by Ra Raju Vidya Mission, Government of AP in 2010. Dr. M. S. Srinivas Sir is 
appreciated by one and all with his best way of teaching for the last three decades. His contributions to the department and the JNU Hyderabad in various roles are remarkable. His helping nature, inspiring character, advanced teaching methods with visual aids, research capabilities are additional qualities in him apart from his goodness and vast experience in the field of education. Thank you all. Thank you, Mrs. Nagamani, for your nice introduction about Dr. M. A. Srinivas, sir. Now, I hand over the session to Dr. M. A. Srinivas Garu. Sir, please. Yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, kind words. Especially, I thank uh, the head of the sir, department. Uh, yeah. I thank the head of the department, uh, Dr. Achar Ilgaru, and all other faculty members. Uh, Sir, I'm able to hear you, sir. Sir? Yeah, just a minute. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it... Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, at the outset, I thank all the member, all the faculty members of the Department of Mathematics, Bapatla College of Engineering, especially head of the department, uh, Professor Achar Ligaru and uh, Vijay Sarthi Garu and all the other members. And uh, my uh, thanks to the person for putting good words about me. I don't know how far it is uh, they're suitable for me. But anyway, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, because this uh, today's lecture is completely uh, for the students, I prefer to... <clears throat> confine myself to the topics which already students learned at their uh, lower level, say, for example, uh, intermediate, and what they are learning in the first two years of their BTEC. I'll confine only those, to those topics. And even if they learn some of them, uh, probably some topics may not be there in your syllabus, but still, uh, they will definitely help you in uh, the other thing, in other ways. Okay. Uh, first of all, my compliments to all the distinguished teachers and uh, students who are present. We made it towards the realization of developed India. So since ages, mathematics was there, and first mathematics uh, roots were from the uh, India only, from Bharat Desham. So uh, probably many of you know about uh, Brahma Gupta, Aryabhatta, Bhaskara II, Varahamira. Probably in our uh, centuries, like uh, Srinivas Ramanujan, we are celebrating his 160th birthday. And uh, quite recently uh, passed away the Professor uh, C. R. Rao, who was the Padma Vipushan of from our country, and who was at the age of one one or two years. He passed away recently. His contributions towards statistics were uh, very significant. So there were so many people who worked hard for uh, the development of mathematics and that was our national heritage. Our aim, our past is our pride and presently what we have to do is we have to, there is a big challenge with us to bring that legacy forward and the future is ours to build. Uh, it was rightly said in uh, Vedas that Yadha Sikha Mayuranam, probably many of you might have heard this sloka many times from many places, but still I, I love it. Yadha Sikha Mayuranam Naganam Manayo Yadha Tad Vedanga Sastranam Ganitam Urdha Samstitaha. So, as you know, um, uh, as the crest of the peacock and uh, the a gem on the which lies at the top of the cobra, among all the sciences, not only maths, physics, chemistry, whatever science you take, among all the sciences, mathematics will be there at the upper position. So just to uh, uh, have the better uh, internet facility, I'm switching off my camera. Yeah. So mathematics is the most ancient of all the sciences, and it is a living science. It was there, it is now, definitely it will be in future also. And uh, simply it's uh, uh, 
existence of mathematics is not passive it is very dynamic it is uh, it is used to uh, to use for many unforeseen applications probably i can give you one example so when the number theory was invented no one at that time were aware of that that tremendous applications from number theory will be there in the future generations now we are enjoying the if we advantage of that number theory what this technology what has developed so far and now we are using our a uh, uh, lot of transactions we are doing through banking sector to online we are doing everything was secured that the basic reason for that is that number theory so when the number theory was invented in those days the people have not thought that number theory will have such kind of uh, influence luckily and uh, our uh, um uh, sinivas ramanujan what they wrote in that area too so no science can have its vocabulary without the mathematical formulations it is an integral part of any scientific thought even if you take physics chemistry or whatever branch of engineering you take if the teachers do not erase the board if you go to the classroom of any engineering class then definitely you will see lot of mathematics on the board though it belongs to mechanical civil and whatever what branch you take electrical everything so every science every engineering or science it has it without having the knowledge of uh, mathematical formulations in fact it without having the vocabulary if the mathemat- language of mathematics is not there they are unable to do good in those subjects so no science can have its vocabulary without the mathematical formulations in the last two centuries mathematics has been applied to engineering physical sciences botany geology medicine anthropology economics what else even in linguistics also the we are able to communicate each other in on mobile phone in in the local languages like telugu tamil whatever language you take that's because of, uh, the uh, that was happened just because of the development of mathematics unless the mathematical theories are developed the technology cannot be developed so <clears throat> without mathematics there won't be any engineering there won't be any other science so almost no work of life where there is no need of mathematics everywhere mathematics is required whatever work of life you take whatever branch you take the the, the, the main advantage of this mathematics is you, you, I, i suggest all the students don't treat mathematics as some subject it is some beautiful language it it mathematics has its own language if you understand that language you can know better so mathematics is the language that to that language is same wherever you go throughout the world language of mathematics is same everywhere in the country everywhere in the world everybody writes only the symbol plus to add two things no other symbol they use so language of mathematics is unique and everybody use that this is where nowadays very very ha- required the teacher has to teach only in, in by giving visualizations of the mathematical concepts and if the students also learn the things using these visualizations their enhancement of understanding the concepts will increase a lot and especially uh, as uh, you, you you are con- your your uh, what do you say uh, <clears throat> your program is focused on enhancing the uh, coding or something for uh, you are conducting this program how to write better code and all those things for writing a code first of all you should need, you need to understand what actually the problem is if you have a better idea about the real world problem then you can write the correct code for it so understanding the problem is more important for understanding any engineering problem we need a mathematical concepts for understanding those mathematical concepts this visualization plays a major role i think this is the uh, order of the day what we need is the visualization mathematical concepts what is actually visualization everyone of you know which is something we see that is called a visualization so it is any technique for creating images or diagrams or animations to communicate a message that is a visualization we we learned this is some kind of visualizations at our high school level also like pie chart bar chart there are also visualizations they they in diagrammatic form 
we are representing some information okay a systematic you, you should not prepare those visualizations as you feel like there are certain rules and regulations to prepare those animations or what prepare those visualizations a systematic rule based permanent and graphic representations that depicts information to acquire insights that that the graph what you show or the animation what you prepare or the visualization what you show that should give some kind of insights about that problem and it has to elaborate the understanding power yeah, that that should enhance your understanding of that concept and it has to communicate properly so once sometimes if you see a visualization of some concept probably by that time you may not have some questions about that concept but after seeing that visualization some new questions will arise into your mind and that visualization simultaneously clarifies all your doubts that is the beauty of that visualization the great fun of visualization is that it gives you answer to the questions you did not know you had this is a very well known saying a picture is worth more than 1000 words if you want try to explain any particular uh, thing even if you say 1000 words or even if you write a paragraph or if you write one 10 pages of essay probably the uh, the re reader may not understand properly but if everything if you put it in a picture picture form simply by looking at that picture everybody understands a video is worth more than 1000 pictures so instead of the picture if you make a dynamic picture that means the video then it will be much more beneficial okay for for demanding things fine but how to visualize this mathematical concepts that is our more main important the visualization okay fine for if you if you have some data if you draw a bar diagram yes okay it gives you that uh, some information about that data but uh, that bar diagram will not give you what is the mean what is the variance and all those things it won't give some other other uh, representation may give that information but it may be some other things similarly no visualization may not able to give you 100% information about that problem but as much as possible it has to give that we call it as a better visualization so visualization of mathematical concepts is critically important skill in developing mathematical understanding particularly engineering mathematics the main problem for the teachers who teaches engineering mathematics is this student has to understand the pain of the engineering mathematics teachers first thing they are not supposed to teach the rigorous mathematical theories for you you don't learn rigorous mathematical theories without teaching those with mathematical rigorous mathematical theories they have to give you complete information about that topic that is really a challenge for this mathematics teacher so that problem will be made easy if they follow this kind of visualizations and simultaneously you will also understand the things easily probably by the end of my lecture you will definitely agree with my words what actually the engineering mathematics engineering mathematics is the art of applying mathematics the mathematical theories are there we are trying to apply those mathematical theories to to the re real world problems whatever real world problem you take it is very complex in nature so the problems are always complex the interrelated intra uh, related parameters will be there interrelated parameters will be there so many parameters will be there in the real world problems so we need to apply these mathematical theories to those uh, real world problems combining this mathematical theory to the practical engineering problems and uh, if necessary some scientific computing also will be done to address today's technological challenges this is what actually engineering mathematics is so to learn this engineering mathematics what is that we require to learn anything suppose if you want to praise god first of all we learn shlokas if you don't know properly that sanskrit whatever shloka is there in that sanskrit we sometimes we don't pronounce properly and we don't know whether we are praising god or we are scolding god so there is a problem with that therefore one has to know the language 
suppose what is that you are look what you are seeing on the screen is a is three letters you are seeing that is c o w if i show this word or if i show these letters to a boy who is just learning alphabets what he will say simply he will say that it is c o w nothing he will say but if he show the same thing to a boy who is studying say for example first class or second class probably he will pronounce it as c o w cow and probably he may give that it is in telugu it is called au but all of you are looking at that word c o w by looking at the the word something is coming to your mind a white body having four legs one tail and which gives milk that milk will be used for some other several other purposes so many things are coming to your mind what made you possible this because you know that language english language english alphabets you know and that word you know the meaning of that word you know and you have seen that cow that is why everything is coming in your mind the clarity of that is there in your idea so what is required to learn anything one is language another is concept language and concept are very very important without knowing proper language you cannot understand anything suppose if i allow you to uh, sit at a cinema theater at the gate i am allowing you to listen all the dialogues so can you explain the story of that movie cannot completely but if i allow you to go inside into the theater and if i mute that language and if i allow you to see that picture so can you explain the story even then also even if you see the movie with your eyes you cannot explain because you have not learned any language there you cannot get the correct concept there that is more important so combination of language and concept both are important up to recent years when i was a student at high school or even at the graduate level probably your parents also might have heard this word from their elders if you want to be good at mathematics practice it solve more number of problems you will get the mathematics that is the usually people will say that but nowadays that statement is not correct in addition to that we need another concept called visualization in addition to language and concept the this is the only way to learn mathematics to do is to do mathematics that is the only uh, practice what generally people say but nowadays this will not work out yeah this is uh, not all nowadays this will not work out in addition to that this in language is important concept having concept is important and this drishyam that is the visualization is important this visualization makes you to understand that concept in a better way so if you want to learn mathematics my dear students this is more important if you want to learn mathematics one should have these characteristics or one should have ek one should have this you know, these skills you should equip yourself with the following skills what are those one is good listening not only for learning math for learning anything whatever you take even in if you if your father is saying something to you even there also you require lot of skill of li- good listening how heartedly if you listen you cannot complete that work properly properly listen the things what others are saying so good listening is the first first uh, more foremost important thing second one is logical reasoning and third one is always search for the alternate methods to solve any problem if any problem is given to you if you are able to find the solution for it immediately don't relax always think is there any other method to solve this problem if you have four or five methods later you can decide which method which method is better and applying theory to practical problems and the visualization of the concept so i will concentrate more on visualization of the concept the first one there was an interesting story at the end if time permits i'll give an interesting story good listening means what and i i simply quickly move on these two three three topics logical reasoning searching for alternate methods and applying theory to practical problems and after that my concentration will be on visualization of the mathematical concepts first one if time permits at the end ask me then i will 
give some interesting story about that good, good listening and about logical reasoning also two stories were there if time permits at the end i'll tell you that those stories so for example logical reasoning a simple way i'm i'm giving one example suppose if i, if I have given you these four pieces and their dimensions are written there one is 1 by 1 4 by 1 2 by 1 3 by 1 let us say they are inches i am asking you to form a square from it by using these four pieces form a square if i ask you this question i believe that around 85 to 90% of the people who are looking at this screen they will always think in this way this is the square what i what we are supposed to form should have the same area equal to the sum of the areas of the, these four place pieces because you are making a square from these four pieces means the sum of the areas of these four pieces is equal to the area of the square what you are going to form if you think in that way this is what logical reasoning is if you think in that way what is the sum of the areas of these four pieces 1 Plus four, plus two, plus three. Three into one is three. Two into one is two. Four into one is four. All these are rectangles. And for sum is four plus two, six plus three, nine plus one, ten. Ten is the sum of the areas of these four pieces. If ten is the area of a square, what could be the uh, side of uh, length of the side? Length of the side will be root to ten. If you know mathematical mathematics properly. If I ask you to give me a piece of uh, string of length five centimeters, after going home with a scale, you will measure that five centimeters and will bring that string of length five. If I ask you to bring a piece of length root two, you cannot because if even if you take root two as one point four one four, it is only an approximation. Root two is an irrational number which never ends like that. Here you cannot form a square with the side. root to 10 therefore the answer to that question is not the way what we have thought so far therefore you should think in a different way that is what logical reasoning or logical thinking is in that way you need to think so how do you make it if you observe these four pieces one thing is common one is common in everywhere and make that one as the side then you will get the solution for that the middle one this is the square i which we formed with these four pieces logically you have formed a square with these four pieces like this there are several examples we can give you and the second part is uh, search for alternate methods to solve the problems because this is online lecture i am not able to get the um, answers from you but anyway you, you, many of you know how to find the solution for this problem 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc n n is a natural number is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2 if many of you know the proof for it <laughs> one thing is you will establish this result by using mathematical induction that is one thing another one is take the left side 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc n as let us call it as yes write it in the reverse way and add you will get the same result there are two proofs so there are several proofs out of it two i have given is there any other method to solve that problem geometrically also we can prove it so for example i'll do it for a, a 5 by 6 suppose you take one rectangle of side 5 units and 6 units now i divide this zigzag way like this with each unit length this is one this is one this is also one this length is one this length is one they for each and every step height is one width is also one like that i have done it so automatically what happens is it will be divided into two equal parts the area what you have at the lower level and the area what you have here upper level both the areas are same you know the area of the total square as 5 into 6 therefore area of this lower part is 5 into 6 by 2 let us see how is that 5 into 6 by 2 equal to <clears throat> so here it contains only one unit 
because height is 1, width is 1, therefore the area of this small square is 1. And here you have two small squares, two small squares. So the, each square is of 1, therefore this area is 2. There are here three small squares, therefore area is 3. For this there are four small squares, area is 4 for it. Here also you have unit squares, five unit squares here from, from here to here, totally five squares. Therefore, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is the sum of the area, which is equal to previously we did, it is 5 into 6 by 2. Then 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc. 5 is 5 into 6 by 2. That is one important thing. Okay. The next one is application of, I am not, con actually on logical reasoning continuously for about an half an hour or 45 minutes we can talk on different methods that also we can talk in so many ways but my concentration is only on giving visualizations and moving a, uh, a bit fast here and come next thing is application of theory to practical problems suppose you have one theory there what is this theory uh, x plus y is k this i am not establishing they assume that you know this what this what is this result you know x plus y is k there is a constant and you want to make x power m into y power n is maximum. This problem already you did at your intermediate level. Even in BTEC also you will read it. You will solve the pro this kind of problem in multivariable calculus. Finding maximum minima function of two variables. You will get RT minus S square positive, R negative and all those things you know. Using that you can prove it. Or even using intermediate also you can solve this problem. In intermediate how do you solve this problem? You will eliminate one variable x and you will everything convert in terms of a single variable that is the procedure what you learned there in your intermediate here x power m is there into y power n y i will write it as k minus x whole to the power of n and this is the function what you have you will find the maximum and minima for it the maximum value of minimum value you will get when x is, takes this value and y takes this value so that is the theory and this theory which we learned in your calculus you are going to apply for several problems for example find the dimensions of a sector of maximum area and of given perimeter you have a sector here and this sector has given perimeter is fixed let us say r is the radius of the sector l is the arc length so 2r plus l is the perimeter this is constant that is given means that and what is that you need to do you have to maximize the area area of the sector is half of l times r now i have two quantities here even if i change r even if i change l i will get a sector but the sum is always fixed that is equal to k so there are two quantities 2r is one quantity l is another quantity whose sum is fixed like this here one quantity x is there, y is there, these two are varying and whose sum is fixed. Now, they, each term, each, each variable power m, another variable power n, this product is to be maximized. So, half L R, I will write it as one fourth of L times 2R. L power is 1, 2R power is 1. There are two terms whose sum is k fixed and their powers product is here which is to be maximized then when what this theory says this theory says the the one variable value and these two variable values will be you will get if you divide k in the ratio m is to n if you divide k in the ratio m is to n what is one value k m by m plus n another value is k n by n plus n here this k is to be divided in the ratio one is to one so your 2R must be equal to K by 2 and your L must be equal to K by 2. 2R is K by 2 means it is R is K by 4. Therefore, you will, this sector will have maximum area. Whatever constant you have, out of it, take the one-fourth length as the radius and arc length as half of it. If you take in this way, then that, that sector will have the maximum area. That is one, one example. Similarly, another example here, sum of two positive numbers is 240. Suppose you take the two positive numbers as x plus y is 240. And uh, you have to find those numbers such that the product of the square of the first 
and cube of the second x square y cube it should be maximum therefore if you observe the powers 2 and 3 are there here there are two quantities whose sum is fixed each one should be equal to divide this 240 in the ratio 2 is to 3 so one number will be 240 into 2 by 5 so 5 in 24 goes 48 times so is it right yeah so 48 into 2 that is 96 and what is the other one 48 into 3 is the other number these are the two numbers and here observe theory we learned for maximization and here beauty is this for minimization question is find the equation of a line forming all these kind of problems probably you might have heard or learned at your intermediate level and even at the first btech level also this is a problem from the btech level where you have these things so minimum area is asking what is the question the equation of a line forming with the coordinates passing through a fixed point 3 4 so this is a line this is a coordinate axis here you have a point 3 and 4 through this point 3 4 you can draw infinite number of lines of course this is the point 3 4 so many lines you can form all these lines will form one triangle out of those triangles which triangle will give you the minimum area that is the question okay so I'll do that problem here. All these things I discussed. Yeah. Like this, you will get several lines. This is the point 3, 4. And uh, every line, you, the, I, I think you know, the, this is the intercept form of a line. Every line is passing through the point 3, 4. Therefore, it has to satisfy this 3 by A plus 4 by B equal to 1. This is the given condition. There are two quantities whose sum is fixed. And now I need to find out the triangle whose area is minimum. Area of the triangle is half of this is x intercept, this is a, and this is b. Therefore, half a b is the area. So if you want to minimize this, the reciprocal can be maximized. So, so find the maximum value for 2 by a b, take the reciprocal for it. 2 by AB, I am writing it as 3 by A into 4 by B into 1 by 6. So that is equal to 2 by AB. So there are two quantities 3 by A plus 4 by B equal to 1. And here also the same quantities I have whose powers are 1. So this is to be divided in the ratio 1 is to 1. Therefore, 3 by A should be 1 by 2. That means A should be 6. And 4 by B also should be 1 by 2 b is 8. So, that line equation is x by 6 plus y by 8 equal to 1. This line will give you the triangle formed with the coordinate axis of minimum area. So, the same theory what you learned in your calculus, you are able to apply this for a, a question of geometry and even trigonometry also. Another Yeah, this is here. You have to find out the maximum value of sine cube x cos power 5x. So we have the standard known result sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1. Now the sine cube x into cos power 5x, I am writing it as sine square whole power 3 by 2, cos square whole power 5 by 2. Now we have two quantities. What are those two quantities? Sine square and cos square are the two quantities. Those quantities, the sum is fixed as 1. Therefore, their powers are there 3 by 2, 5 by 2. 3 by 2 is to 5 by 2 means it is also the same as 3 is to 5. Divide this 1 in the ratio 3 is to 5. Each value should be 3 by 8 and another value should be 5 by 8. Whenever the sin square x is 3 by 8, cos square x is 5 by 8, that will have the minimum value. Or otherwise, whenever you have tan square x is 3 by 5, tan x is root 3 by 5 or when x is tan inverse of root 3 by 5. So at this value, the function will have the minimum value. So we learned one theory and that theory we are able to apply for different kinds of problems. That is, this is one of the most important characteristics one should develop to have a better knowledge or better understanding of the thing. Okay, now I will come to the uh, visualization of some concepts. 
I'll start from the very basic level things to the engineering level. I'll come gradually. Yeah. In in a, in in early days, maybe at a high school level, maybe sixth or seventh, you will learn this product one plus x plus x square into one plus y plus y square plus y cube, and everyone who are who are in this program. They will clear, definitely find that product and they will give that as the answer. That is fine. Every one of us are doing so many multiplications from our childhood. Okay, what it tells you, how do you visualize it? How do you see that? I am taking two pens and three mouses. Yeah, there are there are. There is a pen. There are two pens here and three mouses. I am asking you, take those two. Take the pens and mouses. Somebody is so greedy, he will come and take two pens and also two, three mouses. All the things they will, he will take and he will go away. Somebody, so, so many shy people will be there. They will come there and they don't, without taking even a single one, simply they will go out. And somebody may take one pen. Somebody else may take two mouses. Somebody else made two pens and one mouse. Like that, they will take several things. That product, the product gives you that. So let us say X is pen and Y is mouse. Is Here it is x power 0, y power 0 means no pen is taken, no mouse is taken. This means x power 0, y power that is one way, one way of not taking. One, It is not taking anything is one way. And this another way, taking only pe one pen is another way and no mouse. Taking two mouse, two pens and no mouse, this is another way. And taking only one mouse is another way. One mouse and one pen is another way. Taking two mouse, two, two pens and one mouse is another way. So like this, whatever terms you get here, all the terms gives you that. So if you take 1 plus x plus x square into 1 plus y plus y square plus y cube, what it gives you? The, it gives you how many ways can you take two pens and four mouses. That is what it gives. That is the application of that is the visualization of that product. Similarly, here you have uh, simple things which are in AP. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus etc. up to 2n minus 1 is n square. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus etc. that is n, n into n plus 1. So how do you visualize it? You take a square of side n. Each side is n. So divide that into n parts. Like this here. So you, you mark in this fashion. It is one square, one small square of your, length, your area 1. And here they have 3. And here you have 5, here you have 7, like that there are 2n minus 1 small squares are there. If you add all the squares, you are getting the total area of that square. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus etc. 2n minus 1 gives you the total area of this square. n is the side, another side is also n, its area is n square. So 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus etc. 2n minus 1 is n square. A similar way you can do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so many things are there. Yeah, that's most importantly. <clears throat> I think in your intermediate, you have I'm from high school, I now have came to intermediate level. The composite function you learn. What is a composite function? Function of a function, f of g h. Probably uh, many of you might have heard that. So f of g of x. Suppose the same function I am repeatedly applying. So f of, again f of, f of, I am applying that. So you will get a new function. How to visualize that? How to visualize that? Very, very important thing. Why, why, why you have to visualize that? What is the purpose? Suppose any, somewhere else you want to know this thing. Suppose a function is here. It is 2x. Another example I have taken. It is 2x into 1 minus x. If power n means how many times f of f of f, how many times yeah, this is not the derivative. Power n is not the derivative. Don't the impression is fn is how many f cube of x means f of f of x. 
So initially, nothing is only if you take single function and I'm taking the va x value as 0.1. If I put that 0.1 here, I'll get 0 0.02. If I put that 0 0.02 here, I'll get 0 0.04. If I go on doing it for this function and for this function, what is that you're observing? If you continuously do it, the values are increasing. Whereas for this function gx, if you substitute this 0 0.1 here and you are getting 0 0.09, if I put that 0 0.09 here, 0 0.0388, like that, if you observe, all the values are coming to a standard value. If I put 0 0.5, 0 0.5 means 1 by 2. If I put 1 by 2 here, what is that you will get? Again, you will get 1 by 2. 2 into 1 by 2 is 1. 1 minus 1 by 2 is 1 by 2. What, what you will get again if you substitute, it will stop at that only. So simply by looking at the graph of any function, can you say that it will have this property? It will have, it will have this property. Can you, can you say like that? To understand that, what, what we need, how to find out f of f of x. So now what you have is, suppose you have a function like this. If I take one x, if I take one point x here, what is this point? This point is x, and because it is f x, f of x. Now, this point x f x is to be substituted again in the in the function f x. We calculated what is f x? F x is this length. Suppose this is two for some function. Suppose that this is five for another function. From this graph only, you need to identify where that 5 will be here and what is that corresponding to that 5 what is f of 5 that is to be learned it's a very very interesting probably uh, that means how to make the what is that you are doing here the y coordinate next time first time if you find out f of x this is your y coordinate value that y is now becoming x coordinate so ultimately your idea is how to convert a x coordinate to y coordinate or y coordinate to x coordinate, how to convert. If you know it, entire thing will be easy. So this is the line y is equal to x because I'm drawing with hand and it's not uh, proper. I assume that it is y is equal to x and also it is a line. Now you have some point here, say alpha, beta. Here the y coordinate is beta. That y coordinate I want to make x coordinate. How do you make x coordinate? From this point, you draw a projection on this line. That means you draw a line parallel to it. Okay. This is alpha beta means this length. What is this equation of the line? Equation of the line is y is equal to beta is this line. Therefore, what is this point? This point is beta because it is y is equal to x line, it x coordinate is also beta. So draw a line perpendicular to it. Now this point is beta, beta comma zero. Now I made this y coordinate as the x coordinate. A y coordinate will become x coordinate simply if you take the projection of it on the line y is equal to x, you will get it. So simple idea. By using that idea, we do it. Suppose if you take y is equal, fx is equal to 2x, which is a line. And this is the line y is equal to x. I started at some place, some value I got. Here, this is the y, y coordinate. That y coordinate I am making x coordinate by taking its projection on the line y is equal to x. Now this has becoming x coordinate. Again, this becomes y. Now this, this is the x coordinate, 0 0.04. That 0 0.04 correspondingly will get some y value here. That y value, if I draw the projection here, that will come to the here as x coordinate. Again, continue like that. If you do it, what you observe is it is going on up to infinity. Whereas if you take another one, g of x is equal to 2x into 1 minus x square. It is 2x minus 2x square. y is equal to ax plus bx square represents a parabola. In your intermediate, you learned that equation. So therefore, this is a parabola. If I start here at this point and here, and this is where you are going, you are always ending up at this point. So simply by draw, observe the graph, from that graph you can say simply if you start at some point, that depends on the starting point where, suppose instead of here, suppose if you, for the same function, if you start here, more than 1.5, if I start here, what happens? 
you this this function will be this now you have to draw the projection on the y axis now you draw the projection on the x axis somewhere else and again it will also go or otherwise if you start here it will it will come like this so this is again another example where if you start they will converge to this point or they will end up at this point so like this a function of a function can be identified so i i think no intermediate student if they if, if somebody ask you how do you draw the figure function of composite function f of gx i think they don't understand it if you have that kind of good knowledge probably they will select for iit and this is uh, another one logarithm and exponential functions in your intermediate you learned the function and inverse of a function two things are there from a function how to get the inverse of a function see here this is 2 power x the red line is 1 by 2 whole power x as x x increases 1 by 2 whole power x decreases that is why it is becoming a decreasing function what about log 1 by 2 to base x is decreasing or increasing decreasing or increasing this is from the graph also you can say that though it looks like increasing in fact you have to move in this way as x increases the y value decreases therefore this is also decreasing function and one more important thing is the image of a curve with respect to the line gives you the inverse function here also 2 power x so this is not working some okay and main advantage of logarithm function suppose if you have a curve see if you take a function any function you, if you take so from your uh, high school level maybe from 10th class onwards you are learning function function is a transformation you are moving from one domain to another domain from d to co domain you are calling it as you are moving to the another domain so function is a transformation always it transforms during your engineering course also you will learn several kinds of transformations each transformation is a function there will be some input and there will be some output those who have already learned some laplace transforms for example some functions say sin t they will give and if you integrate that integration is the function by doing something else you are getting another function as 1 by 1 plus s s square plus a 1 you are getting that means sin sin x or sin t is mapped to 1 by s square plus 1 so one domain to another domain there are several advantages of these transformations logarithm is also a transformation the logarithm what it does is suppose if you have a curve that curve it is makes as a line in one this is in the domain xy domain it is in x log y domain so domain has changed in this domain it has changed to a line what if dealing lines is easy than curves do something whatever you want to do do here and go back to the original one that is what inverse logarithm or anti logarithms what we call it as so what is the use of logarithms from our childhood we are doing so many logarithms we are using logarithms what is the fun in learning about the logarithm logarithm what it does is it transforms a curve to a line so this is what y is equal to a x power b it is transforming a curve to a line so this is what uh advantage of logarithm probably in in i don't know how many of you learned this uh, curve fitting in the curve fitting we learned one concept called um uh what is it uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> method of least squares yeah method of least squares the if you observe that uh, method of least squares if you understand that we what that we give only for the lines but while solving problems we take curves and we again we use the method of least square only reason is that curve is transformed to a line and in the line domain we are doing all those things that is the major importance now 
who are coming to one by one to our engineering courts <laughs> eigen values and eigen vectors <coughs> just a minute sorry yes what are eigen values and eigen vectors so as far as out of my experience of teaching experience i came to know that many students if i ask you how what is eigen vector what is eigen vector what is eigen value almost all 90% of the students will give the answer that a determinant of a minus lambda equal to 0 if we solve it we will get characteristic equation by solving characteristic equation some values we get those values we call it as eigen values and uh, something else they will say and we will find out the eigen vectors from it so that is not actually the correct way of answering what are eigen values and eigen vectors learn properly and do it when do you get this eigen values concept and eigen vectors concept the concept of eigen values and eigen vectors you will get only whenever there is a transformation that to that transformation should be linear transformation if you have such case then whenever you have a linear transformation and if you transform some one vector to another vector transformation whenever i say you have here a set of all vectors you have and here also you have another set of all vectors so in this every element is a vector here also is a vector and there is a function that function is matrix a a is the matrix this matrix a a of suppose if you take that variable x here because i am function f of x we write like that a of x means multiply that a with x this is actually the mapping this is the transformation if you learn in this way because you know about functions you can understand the concept of eigen values and eigen vectors very easily so if you take a vector, if you multiply with a x, this is also you are getting a vector. This vector is mapping to this vector. So I am I am in this. I am searching for vectors. If I take a vector here, that should become some constant times of the same vector. Are there any vectors here which will be mapped to constant times of the same vector? That question I am answering. While answering that question, if such vectors exist, those vectors we call them as eigenvectors. If such vector that constant, we call it as an eigenvalue. So eigenvector is a vector which do not. This is the way to answer that. Eigenvector is a vector which do not change its direction before and after the transformation. It whenever i say vector magnitude may change but magnitude will change if the magnitude changes after the transformation whatever vector you get and by before the transformation whatever vectors you get if you take their modulus then whatever number you get that is what we call it as the eigen value eigen value is the constant with which we ratio of the ratio of the length ratio of the lengths prior and after the transformation that is what we call it as an eigen value i don't know how many of you know this uh, meaning of eigen value and eigen vector so transformation should be there one one problem should take another shape then you will get eigen values and eigen vectors for example if you have a bundle of all of you assume that you have a white papers bundle with you open that cover some a uh, bundle of white papers are there you just move that bundle of white papers push them ahead you just push them ahead originally originally this is your bundle now if you push it it has moved to this shape so blue, this blue one it has moved to this shape so prior prior to that suppose i have taken a point here and i have taken a point here also before the transformation if i join these two i am getting a line now this white papers bundle is moved further now this point has come to this this point and this point has come to this point so after the transformation that vector has moved like this okay suppose previously you have one point here in the middle there is one more sheet 
that sheet is here and i joined this now <coughs> after the transformation this point has come here this point has come here now this is the line what i am getting previously and here now the direction has completely changed so this is not an eigen vector so what i am doing is here the y coordinate the everywhere where suppose if i take a point here if the point is say x y original before the transformation this is the y value and from origin to the this point this is x value this x value is changing after if i move it forward this point will move to this place y value will not change only x will change okay this is the dash is not the derivative here dash is a new coordinates what i got x dash is equal to x plus k y y dash is equal to y these are the new coordinates so before the transformation there is one vector called x y after the transformation there is another vector x y this matrix has changed that so that matrix is here if you write the coefficients 1 k i think every one of you know how to write on this 1 k 0 1 this is the matrix if you find the eigen values for it you will get 1 comma 1 as the eigen values one eigen value you have and eigen vector is 1 0 is eigen vector if you observe 1 0 where is 1 0 lies 1 0 is somewhere else here this is the point 1 0 this vector uh, here in the figure it is mentioned with red color this is the eigen vector it will not change this is will this will not change this will not change if you take this this is not an eigen vector because it is changing its direction like this if this is every vector is an eigen vector here suppose in, in our in our houses probably our all our mothers will make uh, chapatis suppose assume that your mother is so smart that she can expand that chapati exactly in the circular shape originally it is at this level originally at here and after expansion it has come to this bigger circle so prior to the expansion suppose if you have a point here suppose if you have a point here after the expansion the those two points will move in the same direction so wherever you do all the vectors are eigen vectors for it so here x and y both are changing x is becoming kx y is becoming ky this is the transformation of course here it is y dash this is x dash so this is the transformation if you take this this is the matrix what you will get eigen value is k eigen vector is every vector is an eigen vector so there are cases where every vector is an eigen vector like this this is another one you push it and also along it so this is another another unequal scaling in the similar way you can do it so see this figure this you will enjoy this is the transformation happened now see the original transformation carefully follow this this is the original transformation in the original transformation observe this blue arrows observe this this color arrow and this rose arrows so if you observe this blue color arrow prior to the transformation it has some length after the transformation its length has increased therefore this and it observe that its direction has not changed therefore that blue arrow is an eigen vector and observe the this red color arrows this red color arrows prior to the transformation it is down it is down observe this this is down after the transformation it is some inclined therefore it is not an eigen vector observe this rose color one see here this is this direction is not changing and also prior and after the transformation its length is also not changing that means for this kind of eigen vectors eigen value is one because the ratio of the lengths is always because both are same ratio is one here suppose say this is 2 or 2.5 and suppose say this is originally 1.5 2.5 by 1.5 25 by 115 that is the uh, eigen value for this if you may assume that that lengths are 2.5 and 1.5 this is what actually the concept of eigen value and eigen vector okay so with this visualization every one of you i think will have some idea how eigen values and eigen vectors 
probably in your in your textbook whatever textbook you take everywhere simply they will give another thing is simply the questioning also find the eigen values and eigen vectors of the matrix that in fact that's not the right way of asking the question also from where you got the matrix so find the eigen value and eigen vector of the matrix is not correct of the matrix corresponding to certain transformation that also should be mentioned but generally we give the matrix is given we simply find out eigen values and eigen vectors so the most importantly eigen value and eigen vectors you will get only in the case wherever there is a linear transformation prior to the transformation and after the transformation the vectors would not which do not change their direction they we call them as eigen vectors and who change their direction they are not eigen vectors if they do not change the direct direction their magnitude may change the ratio of the magnitudes after the transformation and prior to the transformation that is called the eigen value <coughs> okay maybe next is continuity of the function you learned in your intermediate course suppose if you take a function of this kind uh, if i ask you to check the continuity what is that you will do this left hand limit and right hand limit you will find out if both of them equal and equal to the value of the function at zero left side is this is always continuous only when x is less than zero the greater than zero also it is continuous only problem comes with at zero only left hand limit if you find out limit as x tends to zero minus that function f of x will be r e power sin zero is zero x is also zero e power zero is one therefore this is r what is right hand limit right hand limit is limit as x tends to zero plus the x square plus two r square minus cos x in that case if i put x is zero that is zero that is two r square minus cos zero is one so this function will be continuous only when the right hand limit and the left hand limit both are equal <coughs> what is what is the, if you solve this equation what is that you will get 2r square minus r minus 1 equal to 0 so 2r plus 1 into r minus 1 does it work out 2r square minus 2r plus r that's fine so r value is minus 1 by 2 and 1 whenever r takes the value whenever r takes the value minus 1 by 2 and 1 the function will be continuous that is what in theory we do it but, uh, but somehow after seeing this picture probably you will get you will get more uh, better idea this is if you are on the left side on the left side this this rose colored one this is a continuously it is there right side one is also continuously there so it is right continuous and right side and left side it is continuous but at zero only problem comes at zero if we, it moves like this say here at at, at minus 1 by 2 and at other place both of them will move and uh, that value will be 1 at one both of them are going uh, coinciding each other they are they are continuous at that place so the continuity and differentiability by looking at these things you can have some idea about continuity and differentiability see here this 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 shows this gives you so much information about rolle's theorem magrange's theorem and almost all the derivatives concepts of derivatives points of inflection maximum point minimum point so many things we can we can understand very easily from it so here there is a curve this is the curve some equation at different points it will have different tangents okay when tangent is derivative is positive we say that that function is increasing function when derivative is negative that function is a decreasing function when derivative changes its sign from negative to positive or positive to negative it there we will have the maximum value minimum value where the derivative changes from positive to negative second derivative where the second derivative becomes zero then it is called points of inflection so many things we learned so 
all those things we'll see here see this is this is an increasing function this is an increasing function if it is an increasing function derivative is positive that means if you identify if you draw the graph of the derivative that should lie on the positive side see here this is all say the rows one this is the derivative graph of the derivative that is coming from the positive side and exactly whenever the derivative here parallel to the x axis derivative is zero see this is the graph of the derivative it has become exactly at zero and even after that if i move down that means the curve is coming down that means it is decreasing because it is decreasing the derivative curve also came down as on the negative side and here there is one point where the derivative curve is changing from So here, if you observe properly, here the derivative curve is changing its direction. That means derivative, first derivative has its minimum value. That means second derivative is zero. That means this is the point of inflection. Like this, again, if you move forward, Here the, it is the minimum point, so therefore derivative becomes zero exactly at x axis it has touched, and again it is increasing, it has come to positive level. And Rolle's theorem, for example, if there are two values, if you take same, there will be a point where the derivative becomes zero, Lagrange's theorem, all those things can, can be explained using this. This is, as far as my knowledge is concerned, if if you give one function to the student and ask him to draw the graph of its derivative, probably if you give y is equal to x square, and uh, if you ask the student to draw the graph of its derivative, they may not be able to solve it. Suppose if x square plus 5x plus 7, that is the parabola what you have given. Draw the graph of its derivative, majority of the students may not be able to find out, they may not be able to draw the graph of that function. If they can draw that function, that means they are able to learning everything. So where it is positive, where it is negative, where you will have the maximum, where it will have the minimum. And all those things are very much needed. Those who are strong at calculus at their intermediate, they can do excellently in their engineering course. Students, my dear students, understand this. Those who are still in the first year, it is not time I am Just at least now you start and learn the calculus of your intermediate. It excellently helps you understanding mathematical concepts very easily at the engineering level. If you are not, if you are poor at calculus, probably you will feel uh, difficult in understanding mathematical subjects. The most important, uh, interestingly, geometric series. From, from our childhood, we talk about series at several places. Geometric series, arithmetic series, Fourier series, Taylor series, McLaren series. There are several Fourier series like that. So, what all these series, what they tells you? Ultimately, there is one commonality in all the series. And... Uh, Another way, in what way each is different from the other. That clarity you should have. So before going to that point, so let us see what geometric series, suppose you have given this. this every one of you can easily say the answer for it because it is a, a geometric series whose first term, if I put k equal to 1, first term is 1 by 2 and common ratio is also 1 by 2. So because it is from 1 to infinity because some of infinite terms are there, Sum of the infinite terms of a GP is A by 1 minus R. This formula we can use 
only when that common ratio is less than 1 because here common ratio is 1 by 2 we can do it but don't use this formula whenever r value is greater than 1 and when r value is less than minus 1 don't do it so this is a is 1 by 2 by 1 minus 1 by 2 is 1 by 2 so this is 1 it's mathematically fine everything is clear now everybody we know the formula we got the answer as 1 fine but how to there are two things to understand here first thing is how many numbers you are adding you are adding infinite number of numbers now the question is how to add infinite number of numbers that is first question okay how to add infinite number if i give you if i give you one lakh numbers and if i ask you to add you can add it though you take some more three or four days time you may give me the answer by adding all those one lakh numbers some you can give it but if i ask you to add an infinite number of numbers how do you add you cannot complete your task even your lifetime because infinite number of terms continuously they will come and they will never end up you cannot find the sum so so mathematics gives an excellent answer for that how to find the sum of infinite number of numbers that is why we got a concept called limit whenever you say that limit if you find a limit as x tends to a fx is equal to l if you write this fx value will never become l it will come close to l as x comes to a this is another concept these two combinedly will give you this this sum you are writing equal to one does it mean that it is equal to one this sum will be approach to one but not exactly equal to one that idea you can have though in even if your teacher explains this by spending half an hour or so probably some of you may not be able to properly understand but if you try to understand that using this so there is a square here of uh, side one length of this is one so i i have given you an instrument excellent instrument with the grace of the god i have given you an instrument what this instrument does is however small number give to you or however small a piece of paper give it to you it will exactly make it into half such an excellent instrument is given to you now because you you give this square piece it will make it into half and remaining half is here now give that half now it will make it into half one fourth here and one fourth here again make it off this is one eight again make it half it will give one sixteen remaining part give it it will make it half it will make it half it will go on doing the making it off and one by one six one by sixty four if i give you it will again make it half it will make it half like that continuously do it so during this process then any time will this process end answer to that question is because it process never ends because always if you cut some part or half of that part will be remained that part always remains you are going on cutting it and now is this sum of all these sub pieces equal to total area of the square yes but can you are you going to add all the pieces some pieces still will be left at the corner still remained because you are doing that process infinitely therefore what happens this sum value will be almost all very 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 close to the area of the total square which is equal to one so some kind of visualization makes your understanding level much more clear this is taylor's expansion what you learned in your intermediate and also here in um, engineering in first year engineering i think you, i don't know whether the, you have that in the syllabus exponential function sin x cos x logarithm of 1 plus x whatever you give taylor's expansion we can find out and of course this is a mclaren's expansion this mclaren's expansion taylor's expansion they give all these series are the approximations of or i can say polynomial the approximations of functions this is what every series does if you take for example if you take this one so here at about x is equal to 0 you are finding this taylor series this is the function y is equal to fx x is 0 what is the value of y 
e power 0, that is 1. So this is the point. At x is equal to 0, y is value is 1. For this function, the value of the function at 0 is 1, that is first term. Now, find the equation of the tangent to the curve y is equal to e power x at the point 0, 1, an intermediate level problem. Find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point 0, 1. y minus y1 is equal to slope. What is the derivative of e power x is e power x? If I substitute 0 there, e power 0 is 1 into x minus 0. So y is equal to bring this 1 on this side, 1 plus x. So this is the equation of the tangent. So this is the equation of the tangent. Okay. That means if you have any curve, if you have any curve at the at, at the origin, it will be represented with one value, one here, next to the tangent derivative. After that, you will have these three terms. If you take, it is a parabola, ax square plus bx plus c. So e power x is approximated with a parabola. e power x is approximated with a cubic function like that. Okay. You see, observe here, this is e power x. Observe this, the, the blue colored one is the curve e power x. Observe the red colored one, red line, first point, again it starts, again it starts now. Observe that there is a point 0, 1. After that, 1 plus x line, this is y equal to 1, line tangent, parabola, 4th degree, 5th degree, 6th degree, 7th degree. What is that you are observing? You are observing that e power x and this red colored one, both are coinciding. But after this, there may be difference. After uh, this term, the e power x and e red color, the graph, both of them may deviate. But if you take more and more terms, more in the more in interval, both of them will coincide. That is what actually the expansion gives you. What that expansion gives you? The e function can be expressed as a polynomial, and that polynomial and the function both will coincide up to some extent. Uh, if you take more and more terms, the interval of coincidence will increase. The same case with the sine x, the same case with cos x, the same case with the log 1 plus x. I'll give you one more example with sine x. You can do it here. So this is sine x graph. Now, at 0, this is the line y is equal to x. This is the line y is equal to x. This y, the line y is equal to x is coincident only at this origin. At origin only, both are coinciding each other, not everywhere. If I go on doing that, both of them are coinciding. If you observe here at the beginning, both are coinciding means sin x and x, this is the line y is equal to x. Sin x and x are coincident up to small part. Even in physics, at many places, you will use one common thing. Sin x is equal to x when x is small. This is generally we use. What does it mean? That means the line y is equal to x and the curve y is equal to sin x. Both will have the same value at very small means at zero in this very small interval around zero both of them will be automatically equal sin x and x minus x cube by 3 both will be equal up to some larger extent still if you take more and more terms you will get x minus x cube by 3 factorial x power 5 by 5 factorial and all those things will become equal So this is what Taylor series is. This is circular curvature. In your physics experiments, probably many of you might have
so in, in your intermediate or uh, engineering i don't remember i think you will do one experiment called spherometer they will give you one lens and they will ask you to find the radius of curvature for it in that experiment what you do is whatever lens is given to you that lens has been cut from one sphere one sphere from which sphere or from which sphere of radius how much that lens has been cut that is what finding radius of curvature here also in two dimensions circle of curvature means if you take a curve and on that curve if you take one point at that point what circle touches that curve what circle touches that curve and what is the radius of that curve that is actually the meaning of radius of curvature the radius of curvature this concept is very much useful for the civil engineer while laying roads whenever there are turnings then they will see the curvature radius of curvature in the minimum here it will have the maximum like this this is about the circle of curvature where it will have and at other points the circle will increase and it will have some radius okay suppose if i give you this curve and i want the, the part of the curve not completely from here to here a piece of the curve i have given i want to find the length of this curve how do you find the length of the curve the rough the method is we will simply use one thread along the graph you put it that and take it out and on the on the scale if you put it and measure the length that is the best way but mathematically if the equation of the curve is given we have to draw that curve we have to draw the take the graph sheet draw the curve everything we have to do it the mathematics will give us an excellent tool to do it so the rough estimate is if from here to here measure the length from starting point to ending point that is one that gives you the length but it is not the exact length and if you take one more point on the curve again join these two line segments that gives another curve better than the previous one if you take one more point again better length you will get if i take more and more number of points if i take on the curve and if you join all those line segments then all sum of all the line segments will automatically comes closer and closer closer and closer this is dy this is dx if pythagoras theorem dx square plus dy square is dl square your dl is root over dx dy and if you um, animation or that is the i think just now i showed you finding the length of the arc Uh, in differential equations you learned one application called newton's law of cooling uh, every one of you know that what is the newton's law of cooling the rate of change of temperature of a body is proportional to the temperature difference of the body and the surrounding medium that is what the newton's law of cooling and that is the, the corresponding differential equation is this if you solve it you will get this one here one more important thing what what you have in the syllabus is the surrounding medium temperature is constant then only this result work out if you try to draw the graph you initially it is at 30 degrees fahrenheit room temperature is at 20 if you put it here it can comes closer and closer to this 20 so from coming from that most importantly i think you 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 will not consider it probably in physics they will deal this this idea uh, there you will get this from coming from 30 to 25 from coming from 30 to 25 and say for example coming from 18 to 19 whichever is easy coming from 25 to 24 and from 18 to 19 which takes more time 
these kind of questions in physics they will solve coming if the temperature of the body reaching from 25 to 24 and from 18 to 19 1 degree 1 fahrenheit degree is reducing which takes more time for 1 degree reduction so those kind of questions can be answered with this graph okay it is coming closer and closer means suppose if it is from 9 coming from 19 to 20 takes lot of time 18 to 19 it takes lot of time whereas from coming from 30 to 29 it takes very less time but now my idea is suppose what happens if the surrounding temperature is also vary that means i have kept a coffee cup which is hot at 80 degree 100 degree centigrade i kept in a room and there i switched on the ac and my ac has one facility of increasing and decreasing the temperature i am increasing and decreasing the temperature in that room i kept that uh, coffee cup what happens to the temperature of the body definitely this read this differential equation will not work out what happens to that suppose uh, in the environment the from 55 onwards plus or minus 10 degrees fahrenheit in that way i am i am varying the temperature in 20 in 20 a duration of 24 hours i am changing the temperature from 55 minus 10 45 to 65 i am varying the temperature from 45 to 65 in that room in a period of 24 hours and that too which follows a sine curve sinusoidal curve so if an object taken from the refrigerator at 45 degrees fahrenheit and if i kept it in that in that room what happens to the temperature of the body so previously dy by dt is equal to k into if the room temperature is constant say for example 55 your differential equation would have k into 55 minus yt but here the sinusoidal curve is come into picture whenever you change t if i if i put t is equal to 0 Pi by 12 into zero means pi by 12. T is not in the denominator. Pi t is in the numerator. Pi by 12 multiplied by t. If I put t is equal to 24, again it is becoming zero. If I put t is equal to 12, then it becomes pi. If I put t equal to 6 pi by 2, so sine pi by 2, sine 3 pi by 2, like that it is zero to 2 pi. It varies. So at different values of t, you will get different temperatures. This term will change. the temperature so again if you see that this is a what kind of differential equation it is it is a linear equation it is a dy by dx plus k into y bring it on the other side is equal to f of t dy by dx plus px into y equal to q it is is of that form we can easily solve it i solved it this is the answer what i got so what this answer tells you if you try to understand how that figure will be see idi idi blue one is the body and red one is the temperature of the room temperature which is varying from 65 to 45 originally the at the coolest one from the refrigerator at 45 degrees the body was kept in the room so it has become heated and after that it has come down heated come down uh, heated come down and after certain time it simply acts as a sinusoidal curve whatever the body room temperature behaves in the same way it also behaves not at the beginning at the at a later stage so this is what the newton's law of cooling when the environment is changes that is why at the beginning i asked you once you have a method of solving one problem what happens if it happen if it is if it some modification was done to that problem how to solve it in that way always your thinking thought process should be then you will have better understanding of the subject another application you have orthogonal trajectories orthogonal trajectories means you will have two families of curve those two families of curves will intersect at 90 degrees at, a, at whenever they intersect so if because they are intersecting at this point here for example this is the orthogonal trajectory of system of ellipses if you have ellipses here and these are the hyperbolas they are they are they are uh, orthogonal trajectories at it, at this point the angle between these two is 90 degrees
similarly if you have a concentric circles if you have every tangent is perpendicular to its diameter of a circle that is standard rule so if here this is the line and the at this if you tie a tangent that tangent and this diameter both will be at right angle therefore this is a right angle this is also a right angle this is also a right angle at every point of intersection both the curves will intersect at right angles i think uh, i need to so four year series so the difference between four year series and this is for this function fx is equal to x by 2 <coughs> suppose you have a function here some function in some interval it is like this for example say and this function on the right side of it and also on the left side of it of the same length whatever length it has it is also has the same length here in this interval also if the function also will have the same shape of course it is not coming on the same shape assume that it is also in the same shape it happens after this also then this function automatically looks like a periodic function fx is equal to x by 2 in minus pi pi fx is equal to x by 2 in minus pi pi is this function it is not periodic but in addition to this minus pi pi even in text many textbooks also they don't mention even in the question papers also they don't mention but one should write like this find the Fourier series of fx is equal to x by 2 in minus pi pi they should not put a full stop there they should write f of x plus 2 pi is equal to f of x this also they should write what this tells you after this x if you take one more interval of length 2 pi there also the function behaves in that way then it becomes an periodic function whenever there is a periodic function because sin x sine and cosine functions are also periodic this can be expressed in terms of this as i said previously x by 2 and sin x both of them will coincide up to certain level again if you take these two terms on the right side if you take only these two terms this is one function this function whatever graph you get for this function what and x by 2 graph both will coincide up to some more extent if you go on taking the terms on the right side the all the that graph what you get will coincide with x by 2 that is what actually the meaning of this is x by 2 this is if you take only sin x first term in this way you have so it coincides only here only at the origin only at the origin not at all the places so only at this origin they will coincide but if you take more and more terms they will coincide in a better way see the all the if you take more and more terms on the right side this is the red colored one is the new graph that is almost all coinciding with that y is equal to x by 2 that's what four year series tells you the similarly this is the minus 1 and plus 1 and if you take the four year series for it if you take more and more terms they will coincide with that plus 1 and minus 1 this is what actually the meaning of four year series so you will change your half range half range four year series also in the half range four year series what we do is whenever you have a function on the positive side from 0 to some value say 0 to alpha that we extend on the negative side from minus alpha to 0 such that in the total interval minus alpha to alpha it becomes even it becomes odd the teacher will say all these things but probably some of the students may not get the proper idea that is what actually this is this is the original function in 0 to 7 for example I have taken in minus 7 to 0 also they have taken the curve defined in this way if you observe whatever shape you have on the right side and the left side also same shape that means it is the one is the image of the other therefore 
it has become an even function. And reflecting on the negative side, it has become even function. And the same function, which is on the right side, 0 to 7, that is made as odd function by reflecting on the minus 7 to 0 about the origin. Take the reflection. That means if you put y is equal to minus x line up, then this is the image of that function. So the same function, which is in 0 to 7, which is defined in 0 to 7, is made even as well as made odd. Anything, whatever you want, we can make it. That is what we use in half range science series because that because of the time gap because a short lecture i am not giving complete information only uh, glimpses of them i am giving okay uh, is there any any time is there for me still further sir is yes, sir 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 yes sir tell me when when can when i have to stop right otherwise we can continue, we can uh, continue for uh, up to 5 sir after five, okay. Another ten minutes, you can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. After oh, this uh, yeah. multiple integrals, I'll stop. After this multiple integrals, I'll stop. No problem. Right. Double integral. In this double integral, we evaluate this. What actually we do is, first we will fix one variable. First, first we fix one variable, and with respect to the other variable, we'll integrate. After that, whatever variable we have fixed, that variable will change again. That is what actually, if I by putting x naught fix, we do integration with respect to y, whatever value I get, I am calling it as x naught. That a of x naught, that x by changing x naught from a to b, we will get the double integral. This is what actually in double integration, what we do. You are, you are making this x naught fixed means, you are making this constant means, though you have a two variable function, if you take one variable constant, then you are getting only a function of single variable. Suppose this is the function what you have as z is equal to f of x, y. Suppose you have z is equal to some function of x, y. If you make this as constant, x naught is constant, then you have only some function of y only because x naught is constant, only function of y, a single integral, single function in which plane? Now you are in z and y plane. So in your intermediate, you know, in, in, in your x, y plane, if you have a curve, you know how to integrate, integral a to b, fx dx, what you are doing. The same thing here, you are also doing it in yz plane. And this you are varying now. Now this x is varied. So that you can easily understood by you using this graph. So here, if some variable is fixed here, suppose x naught is fixed. Now you concentrate only on this black colored one. That means you have only two dimensions. One one is z axis is this. This is my z axis. This is my y axis. Z y, I have this z y. This is the single integral. What you have, this all the black colored one is a single integral. What you have done in your intermediate. After that, take another point. Now you move this from here to here. So this one, you are moving from here to here. Therefore, you are, add, you are doing all the things. That is what actually the double integral. So initially, this is at some place you are doing it. And from A to B, you are moving that. So single integration, you are doing many times between A to B. That is what double integration is. Okay. Again, I will replay it. This is at A, at other points differently. At the end, it will come to B. In the middle at some place, in the middle at some place, it's it looks like this. It looks like this. So this is double integral. That is why probably if this, this z is equal to f of x, y is positive, suppose f of x, y is positive, and from your intermediate knowledge, you know that this integral a to b uh, or c, a to b f x dx gives the area. In the ZY plane, because it is in the ZY plane, all this mesh portion gives the area of this. This kind of areas you are adding from here to here. 
so if you observe that you are you are getting several areas and you are adding those areas see this one you are adding all those areas <clears throat> if you observe what is that you are getting the, the below portion completely covers the entire volume that is why the double integral f of x y dx dy gives the volume also you know how to find the volume of uh, a solid using double integration so z is equal to f of x y is the surface this is the surface z is equal to f of x y it is above the x y plane it is always positive and the base is this radius this is the array r is the region base region in this r region r if you integrate this you are getting the volume even if you if your teacher tells you 100 times you may not understand how you got the volume but if you see this picture below the surface all this is the region which is covered how it is covered that is covered by adding that that region is covered by adding all these areas each one is one area all these areas you are adding that is where getting volume so with this you will get some kind of idea about similarly change of order of integration similarly instead of keeping that y not x not fixed keep another variable y not fixed in this you keep x not fixed so the same idea what we have done previously change of order of integration similarly the triple integrals so like this we can make many more visualizations i don't want to further continue i'll stop here and my key points in this is visualization is the enhances the understanding of the concept different visualization methods are appropriate to different types of data if you have some uh, statistical data you will write draw uh, bar graphs and etc if you have another data another problem visualization varies visualization is an excellent aid for teaching as well as for learning mathematics there are some free online uh, tools like mini i we will google docs and some paid versions are also there for geogebra of course it also supports up to online up to certain extent texas instrument which i have used so far while for showing all these things i used geog um, texas instruments these are the uh, different tools which are useful to make it easy to create visual visualizations and encourage visual literacy all these things will help you to visualize the literacy build dialogue and community so one can e talk each other even in terms of this visualization my suggestion to all the students is you just review what kind of different visualizations available for different concepts of understanding whatever level it may be maybe at lower level maybe at higher level and always come forward to make your visualizations because you are Uh, better uh, IQ people than the teachers. I do agree that I, I, you are all far better than many of the teachers. You can write excellent quotes. You are very much uh, capable of doing those things. So in your college, you form some math clubs, not just to conduct some kind of programs, but try to uh, people who have good knowledge in uh, coding come together, try to prepare some kind of visualizations. using python there are several other programming languages are there or else you can use the already developed software but minimum code is required for it and try to kind we make some kind of visualizations keep it as a bank your next successor will use it and they will understand in a nice manner this enhances the capability of coding also among the students the science discovers and technology follows whatever we scientists would define the technology people will use that theory and they will find out some kind of uh, uh, instruments and all those things they will find out so because of the technology are we happy can science can science and technology make us very happy that is the main question in my opinion the science and technology will not make us happy 
it will make us very comfortable so as human beings uh, be happy and let the others also be happy let us make this world a happier place to live so i am here stopping and i am welcoming you for any kind of questions if i can answer i will ask that or otherwise i learn from you also sir vijay sir here this is hello sir sir if anybody is interested to ask questions i am i'll answer them otherwise uh, <laughs> thank you sir thank you for your valuable lecture on visualization of mathematical concepts really it is interesting <laughs> this is the time for question and answer session because of the huge participation <laughs> participants any participant who is interested to clarify his or her doubts please come forward to post it only in the question and answer box sir will clarify the same Sinu sir, sir, uh, very nice sir. The presentation in which the way you presented, introspected with uh, sufficient explanation with clear visualization, sir, on various uh, concepts is uh, really excellent, sir. Uh, Thank you. Your innovative approach on basic level concepts is marvelous, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the purpose of this workshop is I, fulfilled. Yeah, so yeah, it is fulfilled. I am very, very happy. Giving lecture is not a thing, but the thing is, if it is beneficial, at least uh, at least a handful of people that purpose is there. No problem. Yes, so the student has to come forward uh, to learn how to make these visualizations. Definitely, yes, visualizations sir. help them a lot in understanding. Yes, sir. Sir, once Aiden. again, participants are requested to post their queries in the Q and A box, if any. Okay, later on also you can collect the doubt. If they have any doubts, you can pass them to me. I'll give answer to them. If anybody is given, okay, fine. Is there any questions okay. from anybody else? No. Okay, sir. Okay. Well, Thank you, Arun Dal, for your good response and valuable support. Expecting the same cooperation for the remaining sessions also. before uh, going to conclude let me say one thing as you all know that many student oriented oriented programs are organizing in our campus which are also streaming streaming in our college youtube channel it has a treasure of many useful videos hence it is suggested to all to subscribe our college youtube channel today's session concludes with a vote of thanks by our staff organizer sri aipotras Potraju, we could not able to hear your voice. Potraju, Potraju sir, we could not able to hear your voice. Please unmute your audio. Sir, within two minutes the program will be concluded, sir. Potra sir, your voice is not audible to us. Please check. Sinu sir, our targeted audience sir, first and second B Tech students sir. Uh, I think they enjoyed a lot. Good evening. Uh, okay, sir, okay, sir. Is, is, Carry on, sir. Yes, good sir. evening to all. On behalf of the Department of Mathematics and the participants, 
I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to our today's resource person, Dr. M. A. S. Srinivas Garu, Professor Emeritus, Department of Mathematics, J. N. D. University College of Engineering, Science and Technology, Hyderabad, who gave such a good and informative presentation on visualization of mathematical concepts. Despite of his uh, busy work schedule, he gladly accepted our invitation and gave a valuable talk in today's session. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to thank our beloved head of the department and convener of this international workshop, Dr. K. V. L. N. Acharyulu, sir, who guided, encouraged, and supported us to do this program. I would like to thank our principal, sir, and our management, Babatla Education Society, for providing us all the facilities and encouraging us to conduct this program. Special thanks to Dr. P. Vijay Sardi, sir, Professor, Department of Mathematics, for his guidance and comparing today's program very well. We are all thankful to Sri K. Kiran Kumar Garu, HOD Department of MCA, Dr. K. Manadip Garu, Department of CSC, Sri P. A. V. Krishna Rao Garu, Department of IT, Babatla Engineering College, Sri A. Sai Kishor Garu, and Sri U. Venugopal Garu for their timely technical support to us for making today's event a successful one. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, your audio is uh, muted, sir. Thank you, sir. I think the sir has left. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you very much. For comparing this program in a, such a manner, sir. Very nice. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Okay. Martin.